Well, good morning. Today we're going to do something just a little different. Let's learn how to fly the 747. I haven't flown this. I've flown it in other simulators. Ooh, world travel. Let's do a world travel. Um, there's a lot to this plane. I figured we would take off from Miami and fly to New York. Uh, we have 50% fuel. Just trying to see main tanks. Main tank one is plump full. Two, four. What happens if we do this? Doesn't do nothing to the center of gravity. Sixty-eight percent fuel. Okay, that brings her way forward, and the stabner. Okay, that. <coughs> so we can go empty on that one. Empty on that one. Uh, let's go empty on both of these. And I'm looking at my center of gravity. So we got four main tanks. Looks like these are the main ones. And then these. Let's see what that does to our. <laughs> yeah. I think we can fly pretty much anywhere. Here is our... <laughs> That's hilarious. We could fly out here to Hawaii. Oh, gosh. Clear past Europe, into Russia, the Middle East. <coughs> yeah, that's plenty of fuel. Sorry, I am clogged up today. So let's... Oh, wow. I just reset that thinking full on the main tanks and empty on everything else. What does that do to our center of gravity? Oh, see, I really don't work. Because we need to keep now I have to figure out how how this burns. Do we select the fuel okay we've got way more fuel than we're ever going to need uh, okay Miami to JFK <laughs> uh, let's don't even mess with air traffic control so let's get in the plane My th thought process is still 6.30 in the morning, so I gotta wake up. Uh, we'll be electrical. We gotta figure out all the electrical. Fuel. And then starting procedure. And then we just got to come up with a nice flow. <coughs> Do we need external power? Because jets usually have external power or the GPU running. So I really have no idea. Okay, here's my Ami. Welcome to my Ami. I think it should be. Okay, and there we are. Oh, we even still got Skeeter on the plane. Nice. All right, bam, we're in the cockpit. Okay, we're gonna shut the radios off. Let's see what our weight and balance did. Uh, okay. 
so it's still where we want it. And it is, should be like 9, oh, 8.30 in Miami right now. Get click happy here. Yeah. <coughs> wow, they put a full support team. How in the hell are you supposed to... Surprised. Well, we'll travel this. That must be. They must not have a cargo plane usually. Cargo planes don't have windows everywhere. <coughs> All right. Man, I apologize, but I mowed my lawn for the first time this year yesterday, and now I am dying. Dirt. All kinds of stuff for the end of May or March. Okay. Here we are in the cockpit of a 747. So we have panels here between us. We don't have to worry about behind us anymore. There used to be an engineer that sat there in a lot of the old, but there's a little jump seat right there. So we have our center. That's our flight computers, it looks like. Uh, what else do I have seeing? Maybe communications. Oh, this will be interesting. Okay, I got two. Oh, I don't have... I'm going to have to reassign all of my... Because I only got contro control. Four. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? How tough is that to come up with? Uh, here's our autopilots. Course, get rid of the yokes. Looks like we have screens for the co pilot. What's above our head here? <coughs> There's all our circuit breakers. Uh, power, okay. There's our first thing we need to look for. Uh, there's our fuel. like our engine there's our engine start okay there's our start okay first things first <coughs> oh this is probably something that maybe you don't know about but in big airlines we steer with our rudders so if you want to turn right you push on your right pedal you want to turn left push on your left pedal if you want to brake, you tap your toes, so it's kind of like a brake in a car. You can brake your right set of wheels and your left set of wheels, or both, so it's up to you. But in an airline, you have this little handle right here, and that is the nose wheel steering. So if the pilot ain't up here using his rudder pedals, which does usually the back rudder, the air wing surface that points straight up in the air that's a rudder so when you push on this it moves but in an airline the captain just grabs this wheel and it just turns the nose wheel only and I believe the longitude has that also so that's kind of a crazy little fact but I gotta figure this out so what I do is I got six throttles here two are for throttle two are for prop and two are for mixture now I'm wondering if I go in here what's it gonna do <coughs> control options um, throttle quadrant see I've got two of these tied together so I actually got six Power management. So there's one, there's two. Now what we need to do is how do we add? Did I 
it just shows one. There's profile two. Maybe that. Okay. Throttle axis. So that gives me. Do that. Let me get rid of this. It's getting confused here. Okay, that gives me two throttles and a center. So that'd be a three engine. This one would be probably all four together. So how do I come up with, okay, that's what I use for all my other planes, twin engines, because that's all I've flown so far. If we flew the Dreamliner, it would be set up. So how do I add a throttle? This is a filter. Maybe essential. Yeah, see, I only want to deal with. Maybe she would say add one lower. Because I may need to figure out how to add. But I don't want both of them. No, 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 no. So I'm probably going to have to. Supply and save. Let's see how stupid this is. Go back in the cockpit. Resume. All right, what happens here? Okay, that ties all four in. Maybe we'll just do that for now, and then I will have to come up with the whole new profile for four different throttles. Because uh, I want a real realism. Okay, all right. So I'm going to look straight out the window. I'm going to toggle down. And that gives me my one screen. And then I'm going to toggle over. There is our autopilot. There's our center screen. Got to make sure everything is set here. There's our center, so that looks like our flight computer. So that's where we put our flight plan in the system. There's our throttle, there's our fuel, there's our trim, there's our parking brake. Uh, so I don't know why that spins us around and gives us that look. Okay, what do we got here? Communication radios, another flight computer, communication radios, that's calm, that's calm. Uh, here's our transponder. So there's where we put our squat codes in. There's another communication. Another, what's this? It's like weather, traffic, map, and back to my screen. So there's our flow there. Oh, there's the one we need. <coughs> Start at the bottom. Here's all our lights. Let's see if my switches are my beacon, my nav, my strobe. 
is my taxi lights. There's my landing light. So if I flip all my switches, I get all the essentials. Except for our logo and our wing. Okay, so there's my light switches. So I'm going to go ahead and shut all them off. Beacon lower or both. That's interesting. So we can have one up in the air. All right, what else? Okay, so there's our lights. Here's our anti-icing, window heat. So there's our cold. Okay, here's our GPU. Utility left and right. EV generator, auto. So there's our electrical panel sure what we start from there <coughs> bring it back to that screen please okay that puts me out Okay, that's the top of the. Uh, 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 uh. So that. Do, do. A lot of this we're not going to use, but here is our electrical. So let's figure out our electrical first. So let's do a. So standby power, auto, or battery happens if we flip that can't flip that what happens if we start the APU do, 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 do. this one gets complicated so APU generator I'm gonna go ahead and flip my main power switches on my I really don't see anything working here these are hydraulic pumps problem is I don't know what actually works and what doesn't engine lead so this might be our cargo temp. This might be our, I haven't watched any YouTube videos. That would be the, the first thing to do. There has to be like a master. All right. We click the battery. Now let's start the APU. Don't even know if that needs to be done. <coughs> oh, I hear something happening. Oh, yeah. We got us a live cockpit. American 2308, exit runway when able. Um, let's American see. American 2313, number 3 for landing. Follow the generic on final. Okay, our center screen looks like it's giving us our fuel. Main tanks. Oh, we're not want to talk to you. Boom. Let's change the channel. Hopefully it's on a quiet. So here's identical. Those are the same. That's where we put it in our flight plan. Here's our engine. So we have four engines, so one for each. What can we turn here? We should be able to switch this to see multiple. It's a multiple display. <coughs> Here's one up here, but doesn't look like 
That's the problem. I don't know what works and what doesn't work. There's our warning lights. This must be lights. Oh yeah, that's very important for when we jump in the cockpit and it is dark. <coughs> Surely it can't be just that simple to start this thing. Need to be able to change the range on that. Here's our artificial eyes and our airspeed, altitude, barometer. These are older screens, so the other planes we've flown have a little better look to them than this. But I should be able to. See none of these work. Oh, that worked. What does that change? Here's our auto brake system so we can set the auto brake. Watch this number, this 1830 should go up to here, there we go, so see my button works there and it does it here and it does it here. You change this number to whatever you want, see I can change that number to whatever I want and then you just push it to activate it. So you can always have <coughs> one of your numbers ready, and then here. 1200 is VFR, we can type in 2500 and does it just automatically or do I have to okay So now we need to figure out our fuel. Where is our fuel at? <coughs> we should have pumps. It kind of looks like this right here. So anything important usually has a cap. So you don't. So we got mains, main one, I think we got fuel in one, two, so there's our center tank, and there's our stab, so what happens if we just have that there? Uh, let's turn on our nav, turn on our beacons. Let's just go ahead and turn all our lights on. Okay, let's do electrical. APUs are on. Um, can't do nothing there. See, once I, once I learn my flow, I'll just zip down there and just click all my buttons nice and fast like. And Uh, 
that's fuel control. So if we turn, probably we're not supposed to do this. Okay, fuel on. Then I believe we got to go back upstairs to start. jettison. I don't think we want to jettison fuel. <laughs> so, is that starting one of our engines? Let's see if it's doing anything. Yeah, I don't Well, we have a number going up, but see, we can only control this is where, okay, hey, we're starting. So since I only have throttle for both. Again, I got to find my sweet spot. I don't want to go into reverse or I got to find the center spot. Okay. Let's see how low we can get that number before it switches. Because it'll go lower. Usually it's in the 20s. And then it'll start back up again. Oh, it's pretty low. Okay, I don't have reverse thrust. Okay, I can go all the way back with them. Uh, there must be a button that I have to push to get my reverse. All right, let's go back upstairs. So now we got green buttons there, there. I don't know what I did there. As long as these numbers are all the same. So this is 96.7, 96.6, 35.6, 6. So we just got to watch that. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, let's go ahead and hit three, two, one. I just got to figure out my okay. We usually don't start everything up at the same time, but till I get. Another fro profile made. Now, if I go fly the Dreamliner, it only has two engines, so I'm set up for that. 747. Okay, we have auto throttle on this, so I can set my speed at cruise and it'll nail it. I don't see how I get reverse thrust. <laughs> okay, it looks like we have four fires. Yeah. And I should be able to change this screen into a lot of different information because I really don't know my fuel flow. Let's see if I can change this number. 
Yes, I can. I forgot what the ceiling is on this plane, but let's do 35,000 feet. 38,000 feet. really need to learn how to change uh, this just might be an epic failure so there's our rudder Okay, now that we got that going, let's go ahead and shut our APU off. Oh, them automatically shut off. So those are on. So I think my power is good. Maybe, can I change this? Let's do that auto. Oh, external power is available, so we could have done that probably without our APU, but okay, I think our electrical is set. I think our fuel is set. So I can't change my display. I can't zoom in and out. That's unfortunate. I gotta have to be able to do something here. Oh, maybe this. Aha, okay. Here's our range, so I can zoom in and out of the airport. There's our weather, so we can have weather. All right, so we got them on both sides. So the co-pilot can do that, I can do that. Uh -huh. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Got a push button. I can't, I usually roll it with my finger. Oh, okay, so you put your arrow to up. That's like an 80 mile range. That's 160, 320, 640, and that's it. And then, then come back down. And then this would be map. Wow, these are very unfriendly. There's our approach. So let's put this on map, I believe. So there's waypoints. Okay, that does that. Now we need to find that same panel that will let us change this one and this one because we should have control And 
I really don't know how to use these either. They're real complicated. I've watched a video or two on those, but that's like a whole different world that I've never, never been a part of. Okay, I'm not seeing. I think this is the paddle that should control this. And we should be able to toggle through different. But this doesn't. really do much. <coughs> All right, now I got to find how I want to sit in this thing. That's pretty good. Ah, oh, let's go to ground. I need pushback service. Skeeter one one two tree requesting pushback. How I even pronounces my name. Skeeter one one two tree pushback request accepted. All right, there's our little dude. It's not going very fast. Ground Skeeter 112 tree requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the left. Skeeter 112 tree, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Skeeter 112 tree requesting pushback tug to push the aircraft straight. Skeeter 112 tree, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Okay, I gotta see when things are moving this slow. Means I probably have a brake set somewhere. And parking brake. So maybe that did it. I gotta really watch what we're doing. Oh yeah, that's much better. Ground Skeeter 112 tree requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the left. Skeeter 112 tree, your request has been transmitted to the operator. Skeeter 112 tree requesting the end of pushback. Skeeter 112 tree request to end pushback received. Alright, now we're pushed back. Let's get back in the cockpit here. Get back to our. point of view where I like it to be. Okay, let's go back to clearance. Let's request taxi. Um, we're not doing IFR. 
which is totally not realistic whatsoever. I don't know this airport. It's nice if I do this stuff at airports that I'm familiar with. takes me a second here on my other computer bring me up my information okay I'm not quite sure where on the airport I is at uh, let's request taxi to Ground the north Skeeter, one, one, two, three, with Sierra request taxi for takeoff north departure Taxiing hold short runway 30 using taxiway kilo kilo 10 cross runway 26 right lima 10 cross runway 26 left mike 10 mike november 8 november whiskey papa uniform papa quebec quebec 8 cross runway 27 quebec 8 skeeter 112 tree he gads okay i'm just trying to find where on this airport i am at and it wants us to go kilo kilo 10 so kilo kilo 10 is at the end of the runway so and unfortunately i have to drive this with my rudder pedals so i know this sounds very i mean this is what you get in big airports like this it's just overwhelming if you don't but it's just steps that you just got to do we want to use kilo and here's kilo if we want to go kilo 7 it kind of shows you the direction to go for kilo 7 we want kilo 10 so if it matches the schematic that I'm looking at we want to go To our left here and the yellow lines they are just like the smaller planes that's what we want to do but I'm in such a bigger plane now this is my line so I'm actually gonna go past my line because I'm so long now let's stop right here and I'll show you outside, which I'm sure you got it figured out already, that if I were to crank it, I would probably run these over if it's not big enough. So I go past a little past, then I'll start my turn. That way I don't hit anything here. So we're making our turn on to Kilo. And now what we need to do is make a right on Kilo 10. There's Kilo 9. I hope it stays true to what I'm looking at on my... Ground American 2313 taxi to parking. American 2313 taxi to general aviation parking by taxiway Zulu Romeo Yankee Sierra 75. So there's our center line. So now we just basically put that in my center. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Zulu Romeo Yankee Sierra 75 American 2313. Okay, now we're looking for Kilo 10. Kilo 10 is going to take us across. Oh, I'm losing my my cheat sheet here. I 
hear it clicking when I go all the way back, so it's like it wants to go reversed. Okay, so this should be kilo 10, and yes, right here, kilo 10. So we're going to go up kilo 10. We're told to cross runway 26 right. Where's my, is it this one? Don't mind me, I gotta find my line. I was looking at my map. Okay, then once we cross to right, we're gonna be on L10, which L10 is right between the two runways. And this right here should give us L10. And it says, and L10 is actually Okay, L10. And then cross runway 26 left. So there's 26 right. We're crossing right now. 26 left should be right in front of us. And then once we do that, we start M10, M, and 8. Let me give me a little more throttle here. So M10 will connect us to M. And if it does become overwhelming, you do have a little cheat sheet here. You can just bring this up and, um, where is it? Where is it? Taxi guides. You can just click that and it shows you. Oh, I was doing the right thing anyway. Let me get over here. <coughs> oh, it's fine then. just leave that up for now and I can bring the cheat sheet back up so that's M10 brings us off of runway 26 left and then we want M and 8 so M runs this way you see right here M and now we need to find our next one is N N8. So now I'm going back towards Now where's my N at? Now I'm back on my Okay, see here's M. When it's in black that tells you and then we need N8. So there's N9 can't find N8 on my oh N8 okay there it is N8 N9 N8 that puts us into the parking and then N goes taxiway okay that makes sense so it basically just wants us to get off at this one get on this one so n8 to w where is w w is at the end of the terminal turning left Now this turned into, let's learn how to fly the 740 to, hey, let's teach you how to taxi at a stupid, busy airport. And when controller tells you your taxi, you write all this down. I just have a cheat sheet up here because it logs whatever they said, but you write all this down. Your co-pilot will be having all the information and the captain will just drive. So this should be W is going to cut us over to parallel to our diagonal runway. 
And then we should look at this sign right here and it should tell us they're very hard. Okay, there's W. So we want to turn on W. way we are on is a diagonal it's there's three parallel runways and one diagonal so we're taking off on the diagonal so this is going to bring us right into the diagonal so we are going to taxi so we're on w and now we got to go to p p is the first taxiway i come to and I need to go to the left, which that's where it shows us. And it shows you right there, P to our left or P to our right. These letters pretty much are like a street. This is P, so it goes this way, this way, so it doesn't tell you. Okay, we've done P, now we need to do U. Where's you? You is just a cutover. So we got like this taxiway, this taxiway. Here's our runway right here. So you is just kind of a little. Okay, that's still P. Where's our Q8? Q10. Sometimes it's just easier just to follow our little blue. We should be getting close. This is the runway we want, but this is another runway right here. That's runway 27, which we're cleared to cross runway 27. But this is where I'm going to get confused because mine actually shows Q10, not Q8. So I go off of real world charts, and then sometimes the charts don't match and I'm looking for Q8, Q10's right at the end of that runway and I cannot find Q8 anywhere. Okay, this should be Q. So let's watch this little panel right here. Okay, there's Q. Well, I just can't use my sectional anymore because it's kind of confusing me now. Okay, there's runway 27. And if I need to turn tight, I can use my differential braking and that'll just help out immensely. So. Okay, that brought us right up here. So yeah, at the very ending, my chart was pretty close up until the very ending. So that's not too bad. Let's turn to tower. Little break. There's runway 30. So you have two, so we got upside down 27. If you're coming this way, you could be on, to go on runway 27. All right, let's take this off. Miami Tower Skeeter 1123 at runway 30 ready for departure north departure. Skeeter 1123 altimeter 30 decimal 16 wind 357 at 8. North departure approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 30. 
Cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff runway tree zero, Skeeter one one two tree. Okay, we'll get rid of this so we don't have the little pings in the sky. All right, now we got to figure out our flap settings. Don't know what we need to take off. So we got one, five, ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Um, I'm gonna say at least five. Five on our flaps. I think ten. Well, let's. Uh, Our speed's 245, 235, 210, and 185. But we can't take off with 30 notches of flaps because way too much drag. Okay, I'm going to... Let me think here. I'm going to try 10 notch of flaps. And then I got to learn all new systems here. All right been cleared. Ten notch of flaps. We're really not that heavy, so I'm sure that all changes. If we were fully loaded, full 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 of fuel, these things are heavy, so we'd need all the help we can get. <laughs> I might totally crash this, I don't know. Okay, there is our runway. Cleared for takeoff. I really don't know my rotation speeds. I hope I got speed bugs in this. Okay. Bring all four engines up. Keep them out of the red. I don't know if I can max them out. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, wow. We're cruising. Let's try one. Oh, there's. Oh, yeah. Probably going way too fast. Okay. Tap the brakes gear up. And we got to slow this bad boy down. Skeeter 1123, continue for north departure. Continue for north departure, Skitter. Skitter one one two three, leaving my airspace. Frequency change approved. Frequency change approved. Okay, I gotta watch my airspeed. Bring my angle. Wow, we're way up there already. Flies nice, but I am going way too fast. Skeeter one one two three acknowledge last transmission. Oh, copy. Miami Tower Skeeter one one two three frequency change. going to get on course here 20 degrees up so that's a little drastic my airspeed's dropping so let's trim the plane let's see what it does when I take a notch of flaps out that'll take some lift away but it'll also give me airspeed Remember, we have a speed limit under 10,000 feet. I should be on my... my autopilot, but I'm just kind of getting a feel how it flies. We're at five notches of flap. Let's go to one notch. Our nose should drop a little bit. 
car airspeed should increase. It shows us right here five notch, one notch, and up. Oh, sweet. I don't know if that's true blue. All right, let's do autopilot nav because we should be pretty close to our nav. And I want to do, see now I got to learn my whole, okay, we're turning our heading. That's good. Auto throttle, let's arm that. Okay, this tells us it's going to adjust everything to keep this at 230 which means it will should set my throttles to climb at 230. Okay, we should be full up on flap, so, okay. Everything is good on flap. Oh, we got a red bug coming up for too slow. So we have one that comes up, tells us we're too fast, one that comes up, tells us we're too slow. So we're at 18,000 feet now, so gear up, flaps up, let's go ahead and we can climb. Uh, let's just climb at 220. We are climbing at 44. Well, it's adjusting my speed. Looks like it's running at 90% on all the mo engines. Looks like we got 927 miles out. Looks like I have wind ground speed, true speed, winds at 29 knots at 272, so it should be hitting the plane on my left side. We got 925 nautical miles. Not sure what that number is. So we are quite high, we're about 12 degrees nose up, and remember, the more degrees up, the dirtier the plane is. So I'm thinking we're probably climbing a little drastic. We only got 5, 10. 14 more thousand feet. So let's go ahead and increase my speed, drop my nose, get the aircraft a little cleaner. I don't know where of our overspeed bug will be either, so. So I have a button here that once we get to our altitude, I believe I hit this button, then I can just put in any number I want and my speed's taken care of. Now here's our heading bug. I didn't screw something up. Am I still navigation?
Yes, I did something I wasn't supposed to. I'm things should light up here. And I don't know why it's not. Whee! <laughs> Pank's pretty good. So yeah, if I push that button, this should be to run off of my heading hold. But I don't see a light that comes on. That tells us we are in nav. Very interesting. Okay, we're cruising at 250 indicated, which is 392 true, 400 ground, and we are climbing at 2490, 2500 feet. So this little bad boy just climbs right up. This is when I gotta really learn how to use this computer because this is how I bring up procedures. Because this will fly a procedure into New York. Seems like I'm sitting really low in my seat for some reason. But I believe as high as I can be. So you can drop down lower, you can drop closer. very uncomfortable flying something that you really don't know the flow so you can see the difference of comfort level for me and the other planes I know exactly where to go what to do and this I am pretty much lost but without watching a bunch of videos I haven't even Tried to look to see. We're just kind of winging it. Oh, see, we're up to 61 knots of wind now. Kind of not quite a tailwind, mostly side wind with a little bit of tail. Now we're up to altitude, change the barometer to standard, 299 or 2. And coming up on 2,000 feet to go. is barking at something outside okay the outside temp is negative 28 Celsius so it looks like it's adjusting our altitude 
pressurization's working. Looks like we are about at 5,700 feet. that throttle down all by itself that's sweet okay coming up on 38,000 feet I've got it set it I'm just gonna see if it stays it should stay at that 250 I'm gonna get it leveled off Cabin altimeter still coming up. Okay, I did do nothing. The plane leveled off at 30, 38,000 feet, which I wanted it to. I had the speed set at 250 knots, and it looks like it's... But it looks like we can do 300, so I may want to set... See, they're throttled way back there, dropping. I would almost say the N1, that's a percentage, so 52%. So, what well, if we whip her right up to two? Oh, yeah, listen to that. Okay, I'm going to set our speed at 290 knots. That puts us... 10 knots below our red line. Now we're into our Mach numbers, doing 82% speed as sound. what I wish the longitude have. You just put your number in. Seeing at 290, it changed my mock. We're going to be doing 91% the speed of sound. That is a lot faster. Okay, there's 290, so it should throttle back. That's why I give us a 10 knot cushion because see it kind of played if I went right at 300 you're going to be over speeding it and if we're doing 9 <laughs> 0.91 the mock that's pretty good well let's see how noisy it is outside That is quite noisy out there, but that looks cool. Okay. We are holding pretty close to what I have. Not exact. But you can see how much more we're burning now because at the 250, we were at 50%. To do the 290, we're doing... 32%, 30-32% more, which means we're burning a hell of a lot more fuel, but I don't see where our fuel pressures or flows are at. 
but this tells me we're burning a lot more fuel. So this is where we have a 78, not, not quite a tailwind, but a cross tailwind. And to go this speed, we're using a lot more. I say I'm very inefficient at this speed. Because I'd like to know what our burn rate right now is. probably stagger your mind to know how much fuel we're burning per hour. Because remember, these were 100% at 14,000, so we've already burned like, what, this was 14,004? Can't remember our total If that was just 14, I mean, we've already burned 1,200 gallons of fuel and we just got in the air. I have no clue how I'd load this plane. Total maximum takeoff weight is 987,000 pounds. That's the plane and then maximum payload is 237,000 pounds and maximum full fuel is 421,000 pounds of fuel. So if you max this number out, you got to take that away from that, which will take away from this. That's why you only put enough fuel on to get you to your destination plus your reserve and then that will determine how much cargo you can hold. Wow, things are going smooth. <laughs> how am I supposed to land at the... Alright. Step out of the cockpit, get me a cup of coffee, and then we'll start playing with different things to learn. Maybe how to get our procedures in there. On what's going on at JFK in New York. What our weather's like. So, let me step back. I'll be back in a few. Well, it looks like we're still in the sky. I'm just trying to think how the best way to go about this. Now I'm afraid to touch a button. Because what happens if I push the wrong button? Ah, wrong computer. So, let's bring up JFK Kennedy International Airport. It's a great airport to land for our first time, don't you think? We have uh, let's count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 instrument of pros procedures for John F. Kennedy. 32 different ways to land. That's ILS for a bunch of runways, RNAV GPS for a bunch of runways, got R nav Z, R nav X, Y. <laughs> so how do I get into my computer in my plane and figure that one out? Well, let's 
let's see what the weather at K J F K is. Okay, New York looks like they are having come on. Two hundred eighty degrees at twenty two knots. No, twenty nine knot gusts. So twenty eight, two hundred eighty degrees, twenty two knots, gusting to twenty nine. Okay. So of course that tells me. What's our choices at JFK? Our runways are 13 and 31, 22 and 4, 31 and 13, 22 and 4. So it looks like runway 22 is going to be our So we have a 22 right and a 22 left. Or we have a 31. Actually, a 31 is what we want. That's, but what's our 31? Okay, our 22 is 8,400 feet long. Our 31 is 10,000, so it's two miles long. Our 22 writes 12,000. Our 31 left is 14,000 feet long, 200 feet wide. So 31 left, that only gives us, that's 30 degrees crosswind, 22 knots. What'd I say, 31 left? Uh, uh, uh. 31 left, 14,511 feet by 200 feet. Concrete grooved is excellent condition. All right, 31 left it is. Let's bring our procedures up for 31 left. GPS, 31 left, our nav. This will be great if I was in my other plane. I knew exactly what I needed to do, but I have no clue how I'm going to put this into my computer. Okay, it looks like we are going to want to connect with Rissy. Transition Rissy. Rissy at 2,000 feet to Zach's. Then we're going to make our turn into Kavuku at 1,800 feet, then runway 31 left. That's our plan. Now, how do I tell my plane what I want to do? All right, everything's good. We're cruising, we're cruising. 
We're burning fuel like crazy, which is probably what we need to do anyway. Everything looks good. Okay, auto throttle. Everything outside looks good. All right, let's get to this. Now, I can really ruin our day if I push the wrong button. So let's just get familiar. Departure, approach. So this is a 747-8. See what we got is this with a so that means if I push this button it does something. Index, if I push this button it does something. So you feel lucky punk? Should we push a button? Well, So this changed, no data, so go back to index, nothing there. We want to do an approach. Oh, this is just like, here's all my... speed flaps approach so 25 degrees at 167 30 degrees you got thrust limitation gross weight that's what I needed on takeoff but it really doesn't tell me nothing Well, is it in the, any of these buttons? What I usually go for is procedures. That's progress. That doesn't do nothing. about menu legs so there's an execute button so um, navigational radio so nav radio departure and approach <laughs> I just need to find maybe it doesn't have it so now we're back into that screen go back to index It doesn't change the screen. Okay, that's the init rep. Flight number 1123, destination JFK. Air traffic control. That button doesn't do nothing. VNAV.
progress, FMC communications, hold, legs, fix, menu, Well, I might be really, that's real jerky. Jerky, jerky, jerky. We might just have to fly this bad boy by hand because I don't know what I am doing Yeah. What is FMC? That's the model. Oh, and then I can't get back to what I was, where was I at? Click happy, click happy. Just click, 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 click. Control panel on and off. Center. I don't know what that means. Well. Ah. Ay, 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 ay. Seeing this should be doing the same thing, so. Um, I really can't get it to do anything. Okay, this one don't do nothing. Well, that blows. See, that's why I don't like flying the bigger things. A lot of things don't work. <laughs> I'm sure it has a lot to do with the pilot. Okay, yeah, I don't know how to use this. At least this one I can get, and there's probably a button pushed here, whether, let's see, does this one work? Yeah, see, this one's the only one that I can actually get to do something. But I should, if I know where to go, I can type in, I don't know if I have a list like on my G1000s. This is an RNAV GPS Y runway 31 left. Oh, if I can't tell this. This is where a real airline pilot's looking, going, no, don't do that. This must be in meters, cruising altitude, 135. Is that meters? Gross weight, fuel. Is this changing at all? I wish I was just, all right, let's figure this. This is approach reference, so that's just a reference. I need procedures. Next page. Here's our descent. That doesn't do nothing, that doesn't do nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Menu. I really need to find navigational radios. Departure and approach. Approach at JFK. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
we're accidentally doing something. Okay, R nav GPS Y R nav thirty one L. Okay, thirty one L R nav thirty one L Y. That bad boy right there. Oh, all right. Oh, I just turned the plane. Well, transition. What did I say transition was? Rissy? Rissy. Rissy. Transition. Rissy. Bam. That's the one we want. I really should be looking outside to see route. Okay, how do I get back to where, man, I, I need to go back because I, do I need to execute that? Oh, why did I push to get there? Is that what I wanted to do? Let's take a look outside and see what that has done to it. Oh, we're falling out of the sky. What is it doing to us? Okay, we're still flying in a northern direction. <laughs> what to do, what to do, what to do. Let's get out here. Okay, we're going to Rissy. Still going in a northerly direction. We're 208 miles from Rissy. That must be UT time. 1511. Ground speed, fucking 520. I don't see this needle changing, so I don't know. 270. Yeah, it's still kind of a... We might have went a uh, complete circle with me not looking outside. Okay, that looks, that's cool. That is cool. And it looks like we have a glide slope kind of identifying. So now I can just kind of go ahead off of my glide slope. Oh, Rissy's pretty close. Here's another one, Chant. Maybe I screwed up. Do I dare try to fix my screw up? Transition, let's, that's the one we want, Chant. Right, 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 right? Yes, that one goes to Rissy, then goes to Z. So, do I ex execute? I don't know what select means. Um, <laughs> I got the plane turning again. Woo woo! Let's get back up and see what that did. Okay, chant. Well, 
What that's going to do is give us a lot more time. That's out. <clears throat> and then that should give us chant to Rissy to Zax. Kuvku and then the runway. All right. This is coming together. I should have really flown the NAR RNAV approach that I was familiar with. I am not only flying something I don't know what to fly, but I'm also going into an airport I'm not familiar with. But it looks fairly straightforward. I have 572 miles to figure this out. Looks like our 2,000 feet, so we got to drop 36,000 feet. Because we're going to go 2,000, 2,000, 2,000 to 18, 18, 2, 13. So between Kuvku and the runway, Kuvku and the runway is 3, 4, 5.1 miles, so we got to drop 18. 1,780 feet in six miles, which is a 3%, 3% glide path. Yes. All right. Oh, this will be interesting. Place your bets, folks. Let's see how successful this first 747 JFK landing is going to be. Ground speed 540, true 518, indicated 294. We're doing 0 0.911 Mach. It's amazing how fast these big planes can fly at that weight. We're doing 10% faster, closer to the speed of sound than we are in the little private jet. Okay, it looks like our pressurization is um, settled down. So if you look at this center screen right here, cabin altimeter is set for 88.55. There's our rate of change, so it's, so we're in the plane thinking we're at 8,800 feet right now instead of 38,000 feet. So. I don't know if that's all automatic or I actually did something right. Can't imagine me doing something right. Let's just do a flow here. Not quite sure what this is right here. Is this our center screen? Does this change electrical? Doesn't change anything fuel doesn't change anything that doesn't change that doesn't change okay it really doesn't it really doesn't do anything I would like to change information here, but I don't know if it's here or what this is. Okay, boy. Okay. So our gross weight, we're down to 8,800.6. Times a thousand. So... Oh, 
Oh, look, I changed something. I changed something. All right, all right. Whoop, 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 whoop. Get excited. Get excited, folks. Ah, uh, balls. Let me get back to my... All right. This is exciting. We've learned something. So let's get my face about right there. Now let's do electrical. Oh, I didn't do nothing. Engine. Static. Oh, okay. So let us do fuel. Engine, fuel, electric, don't do nothing. That don't do nothing. That don't do nothing. Gear don't do nothing. Yeah, see. Wow, we got excited for nothing. Nothing, I say. Bollocks. So, we either have fuel, fuel works, or engine works, which that's the same as that, so we really don't need a redundancy. So, we'll put that at fuel. And when we're monitoring fuel, just as long as everything's staying the same or close to the same, we're good. Now, if this was dropping and all these were staying the same, our plane would become unstable and kind of like the pilot. All right, well, we got all excited for absolutely nothing. It doesn't take much to get me excited, does it? Nope, 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 nope. All right, let's go back through here. Drop down, drop, drop, drop. See, I'm really thinking these should work. But I really don't see. Okay, auto brake. Should we put that at maximum when we're landing at JFK? Probably I shouldn't do this this soon now, but. So let's get familiar. 285 for one, 65, 5, 45, 10, 35, 20, 10, 25, 185, 30. Okay, we can reference those as we're coming in. I have no idea what this is, but they don't function anyway. So yeah, if I could figure out how to, maybe yeah, I can't change this. Maybe, maybe this one down here is the only one I can change. But I should have a hell of a lot more options than just two. Okay, I think, wow, I think we're set. And I could just click that off and shut the fuel off to one engine if we want some excitement. I still haven't figured out how to do auto or reverse thruster. if this is working it says stand by that's all our trims so auto plyouts doing all this so we still that's on all right I lifted my gear up with my console so I did shut everything off I probably should have I don't know where pedo heat is got wind it might already be 
my switch don't do nothing. So I'd have to know if that's just automatic. It might be automatic since you're only flying at altitude. Don't know. Oh, we do have a taxi light, which is off, which I have on. Oh, okay. On's down, off's up. So I don't know the answer to pedo heat, other than it's probably already automatically there. Okay, we're 484 nautical miles out. Zipping right along. Holy Toledo. We got this set at 640 miles. bad they can't put a seeing this in board this doesn't work in board display so yeah we could do nav so yeah I'm not quite sure here's hydraulic four hydraulic brake pressures normal brake accumulator all right. What do you think our chances of surviving this? This is almost like being on a 747 and the pilots all pass out. And one of the passenger has to land the plane. Okay. More coffee. We do have a storm switch here, so if we want a storm, I guess we just switch this. <laughs> uh, dome lights. I need to find out where all my lights are if I ever fly this at nighttime and the cockpit is completely dark. It looks like everything's right here. Panel lights, display. I should step outside again, take a look at this beautiful plane. So that shows us in a yellow, so I don't know what our actual, that shows us in yellow, so that's like caution, don't do anything stupid, but I don't have yellow here, so I really don't know what you cruise at. I'm saying we're cruising way too fast, because I don't. I would like it to know what our fuel flow is. And I don't know what this gauge is either. 9.3 or outside of the green limit, whatever that means. And I don't know what our actual gross weight, because there is a gross weight to land. You can take off way heavier than you can land. That's why in the news or the movies or whatever, when you have to, when you take off and you have to come back for a landing and you can, emergency landings, you don't have really much of a choice, but if you are safe to be airborne, you dump your fuel before you come in because you got to get to your gross weight for landing. But if it's 
like you're going to fall out of the sky, you don't have a choice. But um, say your landing gear won't go up, the plane's flying just fine. You just have to open a valve and bleed. Just dump your fuel overboard till you get down to the light as possible or under your gross weight for landing is. I have no clue what that is. It's going to be whatever it's going to be when we get there. Because this is not a professional operation. We are winging it, folks. Private pilot, single engine, and I can handle this until I can't. All right, I'm feeling pretty confident. Looks like our plane's crabbing a little bit to the left because we got a 95, 96 knot. It's mostly side wind with a little bit of tail. So the plane has to turn to the left so we don't fly off course. So that's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm really curious to see what this display looks like. I'm maxed out on our range at 640 nautical miles, but I don't see any change here. So I don't know if it's going to give us our picture like we're used to on our G1000. Or is this basically just giving us a line to fly? Because we should be able to change the display. Um. There's our approach. So we'll put that in approach because now we have a glide slope, but we have a glide slope here. Um, but see, that took that away from us, which really, that gave us our miles. So I do kind of need that for now. That's kind of an interesting one. That is a PLA plan. I don't think. Do these do anything? Oh, we got terrain. Should we put terrain in there? We got weather. Oh, it's moving out of our circle, so better get back. <laughs> Let's do the map for now, because i got to figure out my descent, because in 416 nautical miles, we have to be at 2,000 feet. So we'll just do simple math. And I usually don't do miles, like I'll do time. So that's 1508, but my actual time is 1822, so that isn't matching. So I really need time. Time to waypoint 1508, but that doesn't coincide with my real time. What time is 1508? Time. Let's see, it's 222 UTC time, 1022. Nothing's close to 1508. Have no clue what 1508 is. I need Kelsey. He's another YouTuber that is 74 gear. He's a real 747 cargo pilot. Well, let's just say he's a 747 pilot, mostly cargo, but he'll fly anything. So maybe he should get on YouTube, fly this, and teach us how to fly. Which he probably already has. I should really search that. 
Um, Fifteen oh eight. Yeah, if I had a. Whoop! Sorry, that was me moving, and I just stepped on the rudder. So, for doing 541, we're less than an hour out. I don't want to get too low too quick, but I don't want to have to fall out of the sky either. Well, let's make up some time, shall we? But our ground speed will change as we drop, but... We're doing 500 and 42. That's 542 miles per hour. We're at 391 divided by 542 equals 0 0.721. Three quarters of an hour will be there. So that's 45 minutes, right? How about we do this in stages? I'm trying to think of our great magical number. 250 miles out will drop altitude to 25,000 feet. Maybe if I do it in steps like that. I really like the time because then it can really just, I can figure out my vertical speed and I can hit that waypoint perfect, but we're still 380 miles out. I'm trying to think. Three quarters of an hour will be there. So that's 400. So at 200, we're halfway. So the half of three quarters. Would that be the way I want to do it? So 200 miles out, start dropping at. What's my rate of descent? For 200 on miles out, my rate of descent, I got to drop 36,000 feet. But I can probably come down to 2,500 feet, 3,000 feet per minute. And I don't know what I push on my if I just push my approach because right now we're in nav mode so the autopilot's following my navigational but when I start my approach plate I need to maybe I'll just hit my approach on my buttons out here and it might follow the approach and that gives me all of my and then it should be able to hold my speed for me I'm sure there's a magic button right here that if I push the plane would pretty much land itself And I don't know if I'm gonna post this on YouTube. I just, I wanted to learn how to fly this and then I thought, well, I might as well just record it. I don't know if this is totally boring to a person on how I figure out how to fly a plane or if this might interest you. I don't know, I'll, I'm, 
I'm having it in the box, so I'll just decide what to do with it later. Maybe I'll talk with some peeps and see what they think. I kind of like to know what I'm doing, because I ramble on a lot just going through my th thought process. Okay, we've dropped a number on that 1507. Now it's 1507 instead of 08. Oh, what just happened? What is that? Well, that's kind of cool. Is that weather? It's white and red, so I don't see any weather out my window. Is that a computer glitch or is that something? It's not terrain. <laughs> sure what that did a r p t what is a r p t because it toggles that off no clue no clue folks no clue what I'm doing so uh, there it's a beautiful day oh, that's a beautiful day to fly into New York you better clear the airways 747 coming in hot with nobody know what the hell they're doing behind the controls that's I'm trying to think uh, 1508 that don't make sense because it should be 1530 because I'm 831 right now in the morning in Idaho so I have no clue why it's 07 no matter what time zone or where you are in the world our minutes are the same as the hours that change so I don't believe there should be a 20 minute difference in any time Or if that's the time of arrival. So that has to be a time of arrival of something. So I'm going to be there at 15.07. But if we add 8, that's 16. That might be, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it doing me absolutely no good on what I want to do or need to do or figure out. It's not a tool I can use. So this is my plan for 320, 320 nautical miles out from our waypoint. Our waypoint, we need to be at 2,000 feet, so we need to drop 36,000 feet. So at 200 nautical miles out, I think I'm going to drop half my altitude. And then my last, so that way if I'm fast or slow, I have a little adjustment. get my game plan in my brain so at 200 miles out I'm going to drop to 18,000 feet I'm going to descend at 25 
hundred feet per minute, and I'm gonna bring my speed back to two seventy five. Two seventy five on speed, eighteen thousand feet altitude at twenty five hundred feet per minute descent. Then we can check at if that's 200 knots or nautical miles at 150, we should be pretty close to halfway down at 25. Because I can figure my vertical speed per time, but not distance, because our distance changes, and I have no clue how far forward we will move. at that rate of descent. I could, well, no, because I'm going to slow it down, so that's going to change my forward rate. Yep, 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 yep. Ah, we're going to wing it. I'm going to put them numbers in. And if I need a little more time, I can always slow the aircraft down. And if we're ahead of schedule, then we're going to hit our waypoint. This is going to take us out over the ocean to line up, and then we're going to turn in. So all this is going to be so the picture I have in my brain is we're going to here's the coast, of course. We're going to fly out into the ocean. We're going to fly going to hit this waypoint, which is chant. Then we're going to turn and head to, I have no idea, Zach, Zatch. And then at Zatch, that's when we turn and start heading. It's 310 degrees, so we're not 360s north. So we're going to come start flying into the land and line up and land at 310 degrees. So which 310 degrees is right here. So we're going to turn. So we're going to hit chant and we're going to turn to what degree? What degree? What? Oh, yep, yep. Need my other mouse. Yeah, then we turn to 70 degrees. Oh, so we're going to hit this. And then we're going to turn to 70 degrees. So we're going to turn this way, start flying out into the ocean. And then we're going to hit Rissy. And then we're going to turn to pretty much this heading, 200 or 24 degrees. And then when we hit Zacchaeus, then we're going to turn 314 degrees. So we're going to go, we're going to turn and head this way, then head this way, and then head that way, 310 degrees. <laughs> deep, deep, deep. So we'll be at 2,000 feet at Chant, Rissy, Zach, from Zach, Zach. To Kuf, Kufku, that's where we're going to drop to 1,800 feet. So we'll be at 2,000 feet for quite a while. So if my rate of descent isn't good, we do have quite a, we got three legs that we can actually still continue to come down. Kufku, I think, is 1,800 feet. That's only seven miles out, so that's where we better be pretty close. Because if we're way high at our first waypoint, we still got two more to go to actually come down. Um, where is R? Wow, we 
you can extend gear flying. Two hundred and seventy knots extend and extended at three hundred and twenty knots. Is that right? You can go that fast? We're not gonna go that fast. I would say anywhere in the two fifty or lower. 240 or lower, but it says like 270 extended. Extend at 270, but you can go 320 extended. So you must have to go slower. And then once it extended and locked into place, it can pretty well scoot, but then you're so damn dirty that. Oh, okay, here's our waypoints. Okay, pay attention. It is starting to draw. So let's bring that in. We're at 255, so we got another 55 miles before we're going to start our descent procedure. And this is getting lower. I'd like to know what this is. Stab. I have to pay attention when I'm doing something if that changes in my pitch or is that a is that center of gravity maybe if it is it shows me out of my center of gravity but it is lowering a number so I don't know I don't know what that is seems like it's flying pretty good we're at a two degree nose high or two and a half degree nose high, which is probably going to be normal. Your nose is going to be a little bit higher than your tail all the time. And our weight's down to 788,000 pounds, so I don't know if we're still too heavy. We have a shitload of fuel. It's been a nice flight to Miami to New York with a lot of rambling on in between. And I do not think we would ever land with 224,000 pounds of fuel. I don't know where our reserve would be, but I'm sure that number would be in the, the 50s. 60,000 pounds maybe, so we're way heavy on fuel. But I don't know what our gross weight landing speed is, and I have no clue where to even try to find that. It's kind of too late now because I'm already here. I'm sure it's pretty heavy. I'm sure we, if I'd have clicked a few more times on that little computer, it'd have probably told us what we should be landing at. But okay, we're at 195. So let's slow down. Let's do 270 knots. We are going to drop to 18,000 feet. We are going to do a vertical speed of at least 2,500 feet. Let's see what 2,500 feet gets us. Let's watch our speed. May not even be able to go down. 
Looks like they've idled back to 30%, so we're pretty shallow on our speed. But as we drop, you see our airspeed's already moved up to 310 knots, so I think we'll be fine. 2,500 feet. Our ground speed is at 527. So I can't remember what it was when we first started this. 526, so it's actually slowing down. That's perfect. Yes, because we're at 8.71 Mach now. So we should be right around 19,000 feet. Is that right? 19, 20,000 feet around the 150 mile mark. And that'll kind of get us halfway through our altitude, halfway through our miles to see how close my descent is our speed's good it's climbing up a little bit but that's just dropping altitude so let's say by a hundred and so I don't think we're coming down fast enough basically full idle and we're coming down and we're gaining speed okay here comes our procedures into view we're 320 on my range so I just watch this when things start coming into view I just click another minus now we're at 160 knots so when I s or miles when I see that I just keep clicking it because right now it's just a jumbled mess okay 158 out so we got eight more miles to be halfway between our 100 and our 200 and we wanted to be close to 20,000 feet so I think we're gonna be just a little bit high but I think that'll be fine because we have a few more waypoints I don't think we want to come too much faster than because we're still gaining quite a bit on our speed and we're actually going too fast. And if I were to go to 3,000 feet per minute, we'd even increase our speed. Okay, whatever's doing this, this brought us into the green. Drop this number. So, altitude-wise, So I'm not sure what that gauge is, but it's in the green. So that, anytime you're in the green, that makes you comfortable. Outside of the green, I had no clue. Okay, we are coming up fast on our, so let me shallow our descent to 2,000 feet per minute. So we're still way high. But now I got to, my rate of descent is on airspeed now. 
I can't deploy any flaps at this speed. I got a speed brake, but never use the speed brakes. I think we're fine. We wanted to be at 18,000 feet, and we still got 43 miles to get there, but I need to shallow even more, which will slow our ground speed is at 505, so we're slowing our ground speed down a little bit. Just because our airspeed's increased, that doesn't mean our ground speed is. Our air airspeed, our indicated airspeed's increasing because there's more air molecules. Our true airspeed and our indicated airspeed will be coming closer and closer together as we drop altitude. So yeah, we're doing fine. Our airspeed's under control. We're at 22,000 feet. We want to be at 18,000 feet. So our ground speed's dropping to 491. So we were behind the ball, but now the ball's slowly coming to us. So And now we're at 1,500 feet per minute. So I think we're good. Oh, wait a minute. No. Because we need to be at 2,000 feet. Yeah, we're screwed. Yep, yep, yep. I was thinking totally wrong. That's hilarious. Okay. 18,000 feet was our center spot. So we got to drop to 2,000 feet. And we got a speed limit at 10,000 feet. Which means I need to I need to slow down, get flaps extended. No, we're still 126 miles out. Yeah, we're ha. man. I'm thinking too much. 18 was the hundred not on hundred miles out. We're fine. Yes, we're fine. I was thinking we had to be at 2,000 feet right now, but we have another 100. Okay. Uh, never mind. The pilot is ranting. Too much coffee. He's forgot his own plan. He panicked there for a short moment. See how fast things can change? <laughs> oh the god. I don't know what I was thinking. We're actually way ahead of schedule now, so we wanted to be at eighteen thousand feet by a hundred nautical miles and we're twelve we're close. Pretty damn close, so yeah, I can even this is controlling my speed. But our eighteen thousand feet we got to adjust our standard Barometric pressure, we got to go to whatever it is. Lights all on, which they are. And then at 10,000 feet, we have to be below our 250 knot speed limit. So we're coming up on our 18,000. We wanted to be at 100 nautical miles. So, yeah, we're actually ahead of, ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule. So 100 nautical miles out. Let me adjust my mic. So yeah, we can come down at a nice comfortable rate. It'd be nice to have a manual that had all of your, where everything should be set. Because actually our engines have throttled up a little bit. They were idling at 30, now they're almost 40 but we're still way over speed so I've got my speed set at oh why did it do that did I not what do I need to what do I need to do maybe I don't have set at speed speed but now it's set at 328 
Okay. I just learned something. I gotta touch my speed button for it to control my speed. All right. See, oh, we're we're kicking hiney butt now because I'm actually just coming up on our hundred mile waypoint. We're three thousand feet lower, so I actually need to shallow our descent. Which is going to slow our plane down, which we're going to... So, yeah, I'm way ahead of my plane now. Um, 5,000 feet more. Let's see what it does if we just level off here. Now I just want to see what our engines do. They should just throttle up. Because now I'm going to learn in my mind what I need to do to hit my 250. But I don't have, yeah, true, true airspeed. I'm at 370. So we got to bleed off a lot of MPHs by in 5,000 feet. All right, everything's throttling up. So yes, it does want to hold my speed. And we're 96 miles to our waypoint. Oh, it's nice having auto throttle. I don't have to. I haven't touched my throttle since we took off. Maybe I won't even mess with that. Don't know. Yeah, we should be. What does it say? No, oh, it says 2,000 feet. It doesn't give us a minimum or a maximum, so it doesn't give us. I just don't know the answer to the because you don't want to just fly it to the, if you can slowly come down. Because flying at 2,000 feet for 10 miles is kind of, but that's how we're going to do it. Looks like we got a small little cloud layer. Okay, so we need to be at 2,000 feet in 85 miles. I'm at 15,000 feet. We got a speed limit at 10,000 feet. So let's get our speed set. You know, I can't put it at 250 because that's indicated. I need true airspeed. So let's set it at 225. I don't know the answer to that. Is it the uh, indicated or true airspeed for our speed limit? I need to look that up. I'm not quite sure the answer to that. Okay, because we're still speeding, so I'm just going to slowly start our descent at a thousand feet per minute. Maybe 1,500 feet per minute. As long as my speed still drops, we're good. But I'm at still 320 on my true. But we're not dropping like I want. Why? Why isn't my plane doing what I want it to. Maybe I gotta...
Okay, it's just nice and slow. I already have this button pushed on mine, so. Oh, I'm having trouble with my vertical speed now. I have it at 1900. Should be dropping to 1900, and we're not even at a thousand. Of course, let's have problems. See, it wants us to be clear down here, but for some reason we're not. So, why? 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 Why are you doing this to me? Here comes more information, so let's drop another notch. Hmm. I don't know why. This is not working. So there's zero. Okay, it levels out at zero. Let's level out. Let's adjust our altimeter. Okay, let's go to 500 feet per minute. Okay, I got it 500 feet and it's dropping like thousands of feet. Wow. <laughs> Nothing like having problems right at the very last minute. So this is, okay, 1,000 feet. Okay, things are starting to work. Everything slowed way down, so we've got plenty of time. We still got 62 miles for our waypoint, and we're well under. See, that really dropped our number or increased our number, so we're not in the green anymore. I wonder if that's an indication of we're way under speed and we're way under our flap limit. What happens if we flap? 1% flap. Ah, okay. That kind of shows us where. Oh, then when we do this, here's our bugs. Should be a 1, so we should be a 5. That's cool. All right, that takes a lot of my pressure off. So it says we're between 5 and 10, and that brings us pretty close to our... And we're at 230, see 265, so yeah. We can even go 10 knots right now, or 10 notches, 10 degrees on our flaps, but. Okay, well we know what that means then. Um, we're close. True air speed is 259, and we're still 1,200 feet above our speed limit, so I think we're going to nail it. I think we're going to nail it. Things are coming together. We still got 8,000 feet to go. We still got 54 miles to get there. I was thinking should be farther out to sea by now but maybe we're in a bay it might be a bay so
And now, coming into New York, it's going to draw all the skyscrapers, so we may have a little jittery in our graphics, because the more the computer has to draw, the harder it is. So right now, it's running really smooth. I don't see any glitches. And I, of course, I've got everything on Ultra. So your clouds are maxed out, your water's maxed out, your trees are maxed out, your buildings are maxed out, everything, the computer. And there is a lot of adjustment on this, so there is a lot of things you can do to actually make it smooth. I mean, if you just take away a lot of the water, it frees up a lot of graphics, but got an airline right above us, so I see two airlines. There's one there and one there. And of course, we're not talking to air traffic control, so we're just going to land illegally, because that's how we roll. See, they're way higher, and I think I'm just way too low for right now, but... Um, okay, I'm fine on speed. I'm below 248 on true airspeed, so I'm not breaking my speed limit. See, I think we just came down too fast. Let's shallow our descent a little bit, because we only have... 6,400 feet to go, and we're still 44 miles out. And here comes our waypoints into view. I got an 80 mile range, so this might be half. So we're 43 miles out. It's just coming into view, and I've got, so maybe this is 40 miles right here. 80 miles is the circle, maybe. Don't know. I thought that's the way it was on another plane, but it wasn't, so. So let's zoom in one more notch. So now we're at 40. So when this hits 20, we should start seeing something if this is half the distance. So let's see how that works for us. Yeah, I think I'd have came in a lot different. I think I'd have been higher. But I don't know if they, it pretty much says you need to be right there at 2,000 feet when you hit this. So we're not gonna sweat the small stuff. You can see our cabin pressure is coming down now. We're at 7,200 feet, and it's actually dropping at negative 8. So we're actually lower. The plane's actually lower than the people inside, but it does that nice and gradual so it's comfortable. That lets us drop two, 3,000 feet per minute or climb 4,000 feet per minute not destroying your inner ear. Well, we're not dead yet, so I think we got this. I just have no clue. I don't have rear thrusters, but I do have my auto brake set to max. Maybe my reverse thrusters work when I'm on landing. I don't know. I hear it clicking. So I don't know. It might work when we're in landing, but I don't see any button that I need to push. Doesn't mean it's not there. But 
looks like we're out of the green again on whatever that gauge is. I don't know what 0 to 15 is. That's your stab, whatever the stab number indicates. I have to research that. Okay, that's why I thought we were going to go farther out. It looks like the coastline turns and puts us farther out to sea. We're not flying farther out to sea. The coastline does a zip. And then we turn into the coastline. So I was surprised that we weren't flying farther out to sea than we are, but... Okay, 27 nautical miles to our waypoint. It's supposed to be at 2,000 feet. We're at 53, so I think we are good. Let's adjust my altimeter. Looks like it's correct. It just seems like our approach is low. You'd think it'd be like 8,000 feet at this one, 6,000 feet at that one, and not just 2, 2, and 18 and ground. Seems like keeping a jet at this a level altitude that long is very inefficient because your engines have to keep it instead of coasting down a hill to the runway. And at this altitude, it's very inefficient for, but we're at 29%, but we're still dropping just a little bit. I got a real shallow, we're only dropping 600 feet per minute. So I think I came down too fast and too early. I could have, uh, maybe done a 50 mile out but we got plenty of fuel so we're just getting lighter yeah the shoreline makes a nice stab to the west there so that kind of like puts us out to sea farther than I anticipated. But now the mental picture that I have looks like, because you look at all these approach plates and you put this mental picture in your brain and it's kind of making sense now. Okay, 1200 feet to go in 15 miles. Our speed's good, flap's good. I'm trying to think what our speed bugs are. Because they, do, they don't match what's on. I think this is the minimum Okay, I've got a 2,500 feet warning. Because we're at 5 degree and it says 265. So we might. 
265 is the soonest we can put it down and then maybe the speed bug is where we definitely have to have it down so between 265 and 235 and we can it, we can go 10 at any time because 10's 245 and we're at 225 so we could be at 10 and I bet if I pop 10 that puts us right in the green so it creates a little more drag oh yeah look at that there's my pitcher going out to sea but it's not us okay here comes our course we're gonna turn back out to sea a little bit so yep okay everything's making sense let's go ahead and click so now we're at 20 miles so this will, we want to get this like at least 10 10 to 5 okay we are at 2,000 feet our speed's good our engines are coming up I think we will just cruise it shows us our glide slope right where we want it I think it's too early to push approach right now what happens if we do though approach okay why is it turning that way nav Okay, maybe it's too soon to push that button. So I have three buttons on my dashboard lit up, and that's nav, IAS, which is our speed, and altitude. Yeah, I think when we turn in at our 314 degrees, we will hit our approach button. This might be very inefficient, but what happens if we do 10 notches of flaps here? Our airspeed drops, our engines are coming up. Engines are coming up a lot. That created a lot of drag. Really didn't do much to that gauge. I think I'm just going to let things go for now. We're coming to our waypoint. Do a little turnout to see. And the closer we get to the airport, I'll start slowing down this. I could be going a little bit faster. But I want things to happen as slow as possible to give me time to react to a problem that I don't know that I have yet. Okay, we're lined up on Rissy's next. We got eight miles to Rissy. turn to a heading of 024 degrees at Rissy, which you see our little line bailing off to the left. And then we're going to have one more left turn at Zach's. And then we'll be straight into the runway then. Our speed's good. Our altitude's good. So you can see the detail just in the water, right? When you have on an ultra, you've got the waves, you've got um, reflection from the clouds, you've got shadows from the clouds. So just because it's blue water, there is a lot of graphics being used to show you little white caps. Oh, I was say, did it just freeze? Um, it's showing white caps, it's showing waves, it's showing cloud reflections, it's showing shadows. It's actually showing the depth of the water, the darker the blue, the deeper the water. As it gets shallower, it lightens up. So there is a lot going on, and clouds are the same way. You got um, light at the top of the clouds, brighter as it goes through the cloud, it gets darker. And 
So if you don't have a really badass computer, it struggles hard. And it just stutters. It just kind of like moves you five feet at a time. And Okay, we're going to make our left turn to Rissi. Okay, I'm going to do... Let's slow us down to 200 here. With another notch of flaps. And then when we hit this next turn, I am, that's when I'm going to hit my approach that's when we're going to start our descent. Okay. Speed's good. We got our not we got our flaps set to 20. I don't know if we do full flaps. I probably will don't know if it's needed or not because I think I'm going to do like 180 I don't know what the speed to land is I'm going to choose 180 knots landing which might be fast but we got a big runway What happens if I do approach now? All right, okay, we're set on an approach. So now our altitude should drop to 1,800 feet to Kuvku. So we're at 2,000 feet here, and we'll be at 1,800 feet here and our landing is right there. So I don't have a, our airport should be right over here somewhere, I'm not sure. So hopefully we'll see our altitude drop. When we make our turn, our altitude should stop dropping. And that's what I'm gonna, all right, there's our turn. Watch our glide slope. So our glide slope's this little bad boy here so if we start dropping, there's our airport. So there's our crash location. Okay, we have approach set. Now I'm gonna drop us to our 180. Another notch of flaps and gear. Is there a lot going on there or what? Okay, we're still on glide slope. We're not dropping yet, but we should be. Approach, airspeed 180, flaps 25. Trying to think if I want to do flaps 30. I'm sure it has to do with our weight. Um, I'm only. Let's see what it does. Okay, full flap. You see that brought our maximum speed right down there. So that means we can actually go just a little bit slower. Let's do 175. Okay, we're not coming down. Why aren't we coming down? Everything is set with approach. Okay, we're not too far gone yet. I'm about ready to
There might be a button I haven't pushed is the Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I don't want either one of them on. Wow, I don't know what I did. Okay, it's dropping us. Maybe I should have just sh shut up there for a minute. Wow, that was exciting right at the very last minute. That's not what you want. That's not the view you want right there. Oh my hell. So LNAV or VNAV approach. Oh, shut up, you had a marker. Okay, we're coming down now, but we, we're way, we should have been at 1,800 feet. Old. Well, we are. I should have just not touched anything. Okay. <laughs> Three in the green, flaps down, lights on, airspeed good, trimmed good. We're coming down a thousand feet per minute, have the runway in sight. We are a little below our glide slope. I'm just gonna let it settle in here a little bit. Looks like it's doing some adjustments. We got 1,000 1, feet. At 500, I will take over the plane. I'm not quite sure if I need to shut auto throttle off. Yeah, there's a lot to learn here. Everything looks good. But I should just disengage my autopilot and it should just be done. And I'll just have to... Oh, 500. 500. I lied to you. I'm just going to let it sink for a second. 400. 400. My plane. Warning. at all this stuff I'm doing at the very last minute to, instead of flying my plane. 200. 200. Get my center line. Center, please. 100. Oh, see, I still got throttles going on. Oh, I don't think I adjusted my throttle. Okay, I'm way way screwing this up, but I think we're fine. 50, 40, 30, 20. How about 10? <laughs> wow, 10. these float. Fan Don't know what just happened there. What's happening? Wow, you don't even feel you landing, landing in these. All right. Auto throttle disconnected. I think I should uh, zip my handles real quick, like, because when I shut my auto throttle off, it was my, I wasn't synced, if that makes any sense. Um, because I was like at 90% when I, took off. I should have just flipped them to get them all where I was supposed to. Wow, okay. It floated a little bit. Um, let's, I have never been to this airport. So let's just kind of find some place over probably where them jets are at. I'm not too disappointed in that. I made quite a few mistakes and was trying to figure some stuff out, but I don't think this is working quite because I can't shut stuff off anymore. Okay. I 
I still don't have reverse thrusters. I hear a click in my headphone. So this probably isn't something that I'm going to want to fly. Like in NeoFly, I think I need to learn a lot more. We can buy, I mean, it'd be cool to do this in NeoFly. Look at that wind sock. We even landed on the right runway with the right wind. Looks like I'm going really slow, but I just looked at my ground speed and I'm doing 24 knots. So I'm clipping right along. Here in New York City. Uh, I think they're supposed to have like automated gates and all kinds of stuff when you park, but. So we got two other jets. We still got the 777 Dreamliner and the 320 Neo. I'm not an Airbus fan. I'm not really familiar with their cockpit. So not that I'm really familiar with this. You saw me struggling, but you don't know what works, what doesn't work. What's You just got to kind of make it up. But I think I know enough now to where if I do this a few times, it might not be the right way to do it, but I'm sure I can. Oh, look at the little planes parked at the gates. That's not right. Oop, there's a big jet taking off. Nice. The shadows. I really didn't see anything stutter, so. There's another jet getting ready to take off. I don't know where I'm going. to get off of this on the get off of this main drag onto this main drag which will get us off into there's a big tail part poking up over the building that might be a I was just seeing where other 747s were parked I just see the little guys parked I figured if I saw a 747 if he's there, I should be there. I like how they got little G air aircraft scattered out through the. Well, I just don't. Oh, there's a 747 right there. Okay. Doesn't look like a 740. What is that? I don't know if that's even a real plane. That might be the Airbus. There's four engines, but there's no. I don't know what it is, but that's where we're going to go. We're going to be one of them guys.
Is that the 380, Airbus 380? Yeah, let's pull up to a gate like we own the place. Yeah, I have no clue what that is. That might be... Oh, there's two lines. Might be a 747. Let's see how close their taxiway, taxi lines are to a gate. Never done this before on this one. Gate 31, that's where we're going to be. I don't have my little guy out there. I have him on my plane that don't matter, but I don't have him in this one. So how about right there? Okay. <laughs> nice. And I think to shut off, we just go boink. One down, two down, three down, four down. And my brake is pull to park. Parking brake set. All right, thanks for flying my airline. Get the hell off. No peanuts for you. Oh, I didn't realize the co-pilot had the steering wheel too. I don't know what happened there. Hey, we survived. We survived. Oh, I didn't go far enough. I needed to put my wheel right there, but since my little dude was on break and didn't come park me, we're just going to leave it at that. Welcome to New York City. That was cool. I had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Little taste of the big life. Ah, look at my flaps are all extended. Let's raise those up. You got flaps on the leading edge. You got flaps on the back. I don't see them moving. get to watch them go up but maybe since everything is off they're not gonna work well I hope you enjoyed that I had fun playing in the yeah, it shows them all up but hmm. very cool I enjoyed that immensely hope you did I don't know if we'll make this a habit or not let me know if you liked it or not. But we got two other jets we can fly. Other than that, have a great day, and we will see you next time. Bye.